What is up internet world and welcome back to Accelerate. My name is Mike and the man behind the camera is Ian and today we're bringing the 2023 Chevy Suburban. Mike, what are you doing? Uh, I'm looking how disappointing these numbers are. Well, there's some positive here. 6.4% of people do subscribe. 93.6% of people, almost 94% of people do not subscribe to this channel, but we're moving up in the world because in the last 30 days, 10.4% of you have subscribed and 90% have not. We're gonna move in that direction on our road to a million subscribers so we can fill up that space on our wall. Now in its 12th generation, the Chevy Suburban has been around since 1935, and you can get them in six different trim levels. The LS, the LT, the Z71 or Z71, the RST, the Premier, which is this, and then of course their top trim, the High Country. Now they are all available in all-wheel drive. You can get a selective base ones in rear-wheel drive, but no matter which engine you get, you get a 10-speed automatic transmission. So we'll start off with the base engine. That is a 5.3 liter V8 that makes a whopping 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. Next up is this. This one is the 3-liter turbocharged diesel inline 6 that makes 277 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. And of course, my favorite, the 6.2-liter V8 that makes 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. Now, that engine has been reviewed by us here at Accelerate many, many times, including in the Denali as well as the Escalade. So if you want to watch those videos, please go ahead and do so. You know what's cool about GM? That they offer three different brothers. Top of the food chain, Escalade, Yukon, and then Suburban slash Tahoe based on size. And people will think, you know what, I want the Escalade because I just like the way the inside feels and you're right to that. But on the outside though, one's not better than the other. They're just different. The outside of this looks really good. I like how it's like meaty, bossy, and presidential, especially in this color. Now for 2023, you can get a different grill. It says Chevrolet and it's all black, not nice, big, and chrome. But if I was going to buy a Suburban, I would definitely buy the chrome version as well as like a Denali. I like the chrome of the Denali and I do like the chrome on the Suburban. For the Escalade, I definitely like all black everything. Now, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, but I will say that the exterior of the Suburban is not one step lower than the Escalade and definitely not one step lower than the Denali. It's just different. Now from the front end, this looks pretty much identical to the Silverado we reviewed. It's big, it's bulky, it's domestic, nothing crazy to talk about. Of course, it does have the radars on the bottom, a nice black Chevy bow tie right here, a camera underneath it. Of course, you have your DRLs in sort of a wing-shaped pattern or a boomerang-style pattern. You do have your Parktronic sensors up front, and of course, you've got chrome on the bottom because, of course, domestic. To the side of the Suburban, you can buy it with adaptive air suspension to raise and lower it, as well as damping suspension. Now this is a Premier, so you get 22-inch black wheels, and if you buy an RST, you also get 22-inch wheels. Now as you move along, you will see how long and big this thing is. It's because it is 18.8 feet long. That's massive. Now what I'm noticing car manufacturers do is they're mixing chrome and black. We were always complaining like, why is there chrome and black? Why is this chrome and not black? And why is that black and not chrome? But check this out. Look how big this mirror is in chrome. It's huge. You can see myself and Ian's face and the camera, all three of us waving at you. And as you move down to the middle of the vehicle, you will see the Suburban in all black. And then when you go up to the trim around the windows, it is chrome. But then you've got black, black and nothing here. When I open the door, Voila, I have this, I can get in very easily. And when I close this door, I feel like it's not a domestic clunker anymore. Listen to the sound when I close this door. Listen, Mike, are you listening? It's solid. To the back of the Chevy Suburban. Now I will tell you the back is rather dirty and that is because it's a Suburban and it's designed to be used as well as outside the weather is pretty crappy. Now it's nice and big, obviously, as you'd expect, like the rest of the vehicle. It's got Suburban in black. It's got the chrome across with the black bow tie in the back. It tows 7,700 pounds. Now when you drive something so large and big and you're sitting all the way in front, like 10 feet in front of where I'm standing, you wanna see the back fairly clearly. Now you do have a rear mirror camera and then of course your reverse camera. So you have two cameras to see in the back here as well as all the parking sensors. So you're actually covered when driving something so big. So if this is the first time looking at something so large, be assured, it's pretty easy. Front seat of the Chevy Suburban. Now, I will tell you, 
it does feel a little bit less sexy than its two burger brothers. The Denali is definitely nicer inside and the Escalade, well, that's a tier above. But all the buttons here though are somewhat similar on this side especially. They pretty much look exactly the same. They're very, how do I say this, practical. There's a button almost for everything and it feels very beat up -able. So I'm not really worried about breaking anything here and this stuff will last. And that's probably why it's still in this in a 2023 at this price point. Everything is just hard and durable. Like I feel like if I punch this, it's still gonna work tomorrow. Whereas some vehicles I can't do that because I know that it will break and it'll cost lots of money to fix it. I also will say that if I throw coffee on this, I feel like it'll still work tomorrow. Whereas most cars, it will not. So if you start off with the door panel here, you have a little bit of mix of materials. You do have two memory seats and you do have power automatic windows for the front. Of course, they're power in the back, but they're automatic in the front. You obviously have your folding mirrors because they're so big and when you take things for a car wash, you want to be able to fold your mirrors. Now, because the Suburban is nice and large, you have a 10 inch heads up display. You've got a massive driver's display that has three sections, one that tells you the time, the one that tells you the fuel economy, and in the middle tells you your speed. Of course, you can change them up, but that's the way I like to keep it. It also has the craziest steering wheel that I hate about GMs. And that is because the up and down button on the right here is fixed. It doesn't do anything. It's actually for the slider or roller right here. But then you can press the left and right buttons, which is kind of weird. Like you can press the left and rights, but you can't press the ups and downs. You have to roll it. So you have the slider for up and down and you've got the buttons for left and right. Why not just incorporate to do the same thing on the roller or have the buttons do the same thing? Kind of weird. But anyways, the steering wheel is fairly basic. It does have adaptive cruise control. And of course it does have heated steering wheel, which we need here in Canada. And when you move to the center console here, you have the 10.2 inch screen that has the latest software by GM and it's very easy to use. It's a little bit smaller in size than the 12.3 inch driver's display, but it's still very easy to see as a driver and a passenger. Maybe in the second row, it gets a little bit small to see, but then again, you have the screens in the back to serve you. On the left side, you have your park reverse neutral and drive. And then of course your lower gear, which I have no idea who will use on the street because that's what really this is designed to do. You got this weird piece of synthetic leather here with some stitching. I guess they wanted to put something in there to maybe hide when they have to work on it or something like this thing, this panel comes off. It's just a really weird placement for that. And they have this weirder little nook here that you can put stuff inside. Now I understand that's probably for the passenger to put some small stuff, but it's kind of ridiculous to have it there. It just does absolutely nothing in my opinion. It's so small. It's got this little stupid plastic little cover to it. Kind of annoying if you ask me. Anyways, you've got these buttons down here to control the screen up top and you've got these HVAC controls down here. Now it's very simple, very easy to use, very, very basic, which is sort of different than what's happening today in every other brand that's being touchscreen. Like take a look at a Volvo, for example. A Volvo is a pain in the rear end to use when it comes to adjusting the HVAC as well as heating up the seats. But in this case, it's super easy. You just simply hit these buttons right here and you've got ventilated as well as heated seats. Now heated seats is cool because you have the heated back as well as the heated back and booty. So you've got choices now. And also you can control the rear climate from the front here, which is pretty typical in something so big but again, very easy to use. And then as far as connectivity goes, you can drop your cell phone in here and you have wireless charging. You have a USB and a USB-C as well as a cigarette lighter. This is a really smart idea about GM by having this console be able to move all the way back for the kitties in the back. And then for the driver and passenger, you have an extra basically compartment here. And then you have a hidden compartment underneath here where you can put some goodies that actually is worth something like a hidden compartment so that people don't know you actually have maybe cash down there. Now, in order to move this back and forward, you actually have to look up here. And this is where all your controls are for your sunroof, for your shade. Also, you can, so funny, you can have the tailgate open three quarters. So it says max three quarter. When you hit this button, the tailgate opens three quarters because this thing is so big and high that you can probably hit garage is garage door openers or whatever by having that. So it's pretty cool. Anyways, the button is right here. I push this and then this console moves forward all the way down. Now, if I had to be honest, I would say that button should actually go somewhere down here so it's easier to use. Having it up here, I get it. All the electronics kind of flow up here, but not my best opinion. 
Now it's no surprise I have a ton of room back here in the third row because this thing's shaped like a lunchbox. So I have tons of headroom, so if you're six foot two, six foot three, you'll fit back here no problem. As far as legroom goes, this second row is pushed forward, but still, I mean, like, look at this. Like, this is a, a whack ton of space. Now the only thing I will complain about back here are maybe the fact that I have no visibility outside. I have this massive C pillar, it's just so large. They could have made the window glass come to around here instead of putting all that chrome and black chrome or black piano black finish on the outside. The glass is here, but I have to crank my head to see over here, and that's a little bit tricky in my opinion. And there's no sunroof or panoramic sunroof for me back here. Generally, most cars or vehicles, when they're this big, they kind of stop over here to give me in the third row some sort of like, you know, a way to not feel claustrophobic. But in this one, because it has a black headliner, it just feels really dark. Anyways, that's probably my complaint sitting back here in the third row. Obviously, I'm not expecting crazy great leather. Most people that buy these things honestly don't even always care about having the best pieces back here because then probably they'll buy the Escalade. It's really just about space back here. Now, as far as them using the space back here, it does have a small cup holder, a little nook here to put some Twinkies, and then back here I do have a USB-C. So there's some stuff here for me to use while I'm sitting back here. And the one positive piece though is I do have a vent here. I do have a vent so I do get some air so at least I can breathe when I am suffocating back here from claustrophobia. Now in the back of a Chevy Suburban, now this is my buddy's car and he asked me, should I take out my baby seat for my kid? And I said, no, leave it in there because I wanna see how it works when you have a baby seat in the back of the Suburban. Now the way these seats fold is they fold down and they fold up. So you cannot actually get into the back seat very easily when you have a baby seat here. You generally have to move this all the way back and it's all the way back right now. So if you were to get in the back, the kids in the back have to get in first. Now, I don't think they're gonna change the dyne ever because it's been around for so long, but that is probably the biggest problem when you have a baby seat in the second row. But as far as the baby's going, the baby's got their own TV. You do have an HDMI per side because you have a screen here, a screen there, and of course, a nice big sunroof for the kid to look up. You do also have two USB-Cs. You have HVAC controls in the back. You do have two cup holders there. And then of course, you have two levels in the door panel to put stuff for your little one back here. You also have heated seats per side so if you have one that actually sits on a seat or a captain's chair they have heated seats but the best part about the second row in this suburban is the fact that the center console moves all the way back to make it easier for the kitties to grab their red bull so we will open up the rear tailgate and see how much room we have in this monstrous Suburban. Look how long and wide and high this tailgate is and of course on the inside a Suburban would not be a Suburban without soccer balls now why this is important is because the soccer balls are actually behind the third row. I kid you not. You can probably fit a fourth row in this thing. Now for those that are numbers people and want exact dimensions, well from the back seat of the third row to the sill you have 38 inches. That's just over three feet and as far as width, can you fit a piece of drywall? Well they haven't changed in like 90 years and the answer is yes you can. It's got 49 inches and you need 48 inches to fit a piece of plywood or drywall in the back of your Suburban. Now here are the buttons for the second and third row. Now the third row right here can fold down and fold back up. The second row can only fold down. There is no button to have them come up. You have to manually do them. Now how much room do we have when I have the third row down? We'll hit these buttons and find out. All right, down you go. I have basically 76 inches. Now for perspective, an actual door frame in a house is 78 inches. If I squeeze those chairs a little bit forward, I'll probably get 78 inches. So when you walk into a door and you open your home, that door is 78 inches generally. That's how long this is for some comparison. Hi guys. Look how big this is. This is a legitimate bus. When people are like, I want to buy a minivan, but I don't want to drive a minivan. I'm going to buy an SUV. This is what they buy, but they don't realize how big this thing is. It's massive. This has the diesel motor in it, so we're going to launch this thing. I have a draggy out. So what do you think this thing does to 100 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles? Let's go. Point two seven. Nobody buys this thing to drive fast. They drive this to just hold humans. This is just a big, big vehicle to drive. 
Sporty, no. Cool looking on the outside, yes. It looks like you're driving the president around in this thing. So it's like, yo, I wanna buy a minivan and it's 65,000 bucks. I'm gonna look at one of these things cause they're almost 65,000 bucks. It rides like a Denali, it's just not as fancy inside. It's reliable, great resale value, residuals are strong if you wanna lease it cause most people do. And if you're in Canada, you wanna export it. That's just what we do as Canadians. And this is a 2023, so it's smack dab in the middle of its current generation. It was launched in 2021, and the new one will probably be out in about two years. This is brand new because in 86 years, they have not had a rear multi-link suspension. So when they dropped this thing in 2021, that is what they gave us to give it a more comfortable ride for the people in the back. This is a really good everyday usable. Kids can beat it up. You're not going to spend the money on a Denali if they're going to beat it up. You're not going to spend the money on the Escalade if they're going to beat it up, unless, of course, you care about status. This is just an everyday usable, I can work it, beat it up, not really care about it. I can still tow my boat, I can fit all the kids in, and when I sell it, I can still get most of my money back. And that's why people buy the Suburban. Well, they look at the Denali or the Yukon first, and then the Suburban, but hey, still more options. And it's pretty much the same thing. Hope you guys like this video. We'll catch you in the next one. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe.